Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit. I want to fly, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. Good thing for me, that's possible. I need a jetpack. This one uses gas to fly. Look, I kept the Elotra. An electric jetpack, which uses electricity. 12 machine chassis and 68 basic capacitors thanks to my replicator. 78 energetic alloy. 16 basic gears. 6 redstone alloys. 8 pulsating iron. 16 redstone conduits, 16 electrical steel, 26 conductive iron, 24 vibrant alloys, 72 pulsating iron nuggets, 8 pulsating crystals, 16 energy conduits, 8 conductive iron thrusters, 6 electrical steel thrusters, a conductive iron jetpack, 36 vibrant alloy nuggets, 4 vibrant crystals, 16 enhanced energy conduits, 8 ender energy conduits, 19 double layer capacitors, 4 energetic thrusters, an electrical steel jetpack, an energetic jetpack, five octatic capacitors, two vibrant thrusters, and a vibrant jetpack. This thing holds 20 million RF, but it uses 450 RF per tick. If you put on engine mode, you can fly, and if you put on hover mode, you can fly and stay where you are for a while. When in hover mode, you can basically creatively fly, and you can go really fast, too. You can adjust the volume of this using the player section. That took some experimenting to find out. What exactly do I want to do with all this newfound exploratory power? Find a meteorite. When the meteorite compass spins, you know you're in an area where you'll find a meteorite. Here it is. While digging through a meteor, you can find a skystone chest, which will usually have something important like an inscriber logic press. There's one chest per meteor. There's another one here in this Meneglin biome. I really don't like searching for meteorites, but hey. While you weren't looking, I made a new room. It includes things like crystallized mineral brick, egregious and thermal cobalt, ME controllers, stable stone, station lights from advanced rocketry, thermal platinum, and light gray concrete. There's also ornate steel, glass, and more stable stone. This is the first time I've deviated from my normal roof configuration, so I hope you're happy. Naturally, I'll populate this room with skystone chests. Before I actually do AE2, however, I'd like to do something else egregiously expensive. Basically, I want speed and jump boost, and though I usually do that with dark steel armor, I'd like to try something completely different. And like I said, it's egregiously expensive. But we're gonna do it anyway. I have all this stuff. The main problem is the pulsating mesh. Pulsating mesh requires pulsating propolis, requires mysterious combs, requires ender bees. Hello, hello, ender hives in the end. And the best part about this is my escritoire. It's going to be very easy to get the combs that I need. That was incredibly easy. One step down, six to go. One empowered diamantine crystal block. 16 moonstones, 64 ender pearls, 72 ender shards. Actually, this is ill-advised. Let's do that part in a little bit. That's another step. Step 3, 9 Skeleton Skulls, only 24 Ender Shards, 30 Solarium, 24 Fused Quartz, 36 Gas Tears, 9 Wither Skeleton Skulls, 3 Enderman Heads, 3 Nether Stars, an End Crystal, Dragon's Breath, 2 more steps, 8 Soul Vials, 4 Enderman Soul Vials, 4 Witch Soul Vials, 4 Vibrant Alloy, 2 Ender Resonators, 2 Sentient Ender, 2 Ender Crystals, and 2 Ender Stars. 2 Rings, a Ring of Speed, which, if you hold in your hand, gives you a speed boost. 4 Pistons, a Ring of Jump Boost, which gives you jump boost when you hold it. And advanced versions of each, which you can put anywhere in your inventory, and they give you a double version of that stat. To offset the increased field of vision, I just decreased my field of vision. If I ever want step assist, I can get the Dark Boots, but for now, I'm perfectly happy with what I have. Boom! AE2 Basement. Now with glass, to show off the controller that I'm gonna put here. Right now, it's going to be very small, but eventually, it's going to be very, very big. And now back to your irregularly scheduled survival. Of course, what do you do when you make a big room ready to show off all the awesome things you can do with a mod? Forget that you're missing a vital step in the processing chain required to even get there. Stable stone. I need basalt, which comes from cooling pahoho lava, which comes from cooling lava. How do you cool lava, you ask? With a liquid heat exchanger, a steam boiler, and a condenser. A copper boiler, two heat conductors, a liquid heat exchanger, condenser, and steam boiler. I need 10 more heat conductors for the liquid heat exchanger. None of these need power, thankfully. It's lucky for me that I have all this extra lava. I'll fill up a water tank with my pump, set up my liquid heat exchanger here, fill it with heat conductors, place the steam boiler here. There are a few important numbers in here. If you're receiving one millibucket of water per tick, then you'll need to increase the pressure to one bar, so that you will need 100 heat units per tick to produce 100 millibuckets of steam per tick. Luckily for us, this liquid heat exchanger produces 100 heat units per tick when given lava. Finally, we need a place for all this steam, that's this condenser. The steam boiler automatically outputs steam, so the condenser will take it and process it at exactly the rate we need, without any EU at all. 
It will produce distilled water from its steam. This is a good thing, because if we're just using water, we're going to build up something called calcification in our steam boiler. Calcification does absolutely nothing until it reaches 100%, at which point the steam boiler stops working. So once we get a closed loop of distilled water, we won't have to worry. Let's place our tanks like so. Water will push automatically into the steam boiler. This tank will pull distilled water out from underneath it. This tank will pull pahoho lava and push pahoho lava. Just move the hold a little bit. And this tank will push lava. Now you can see it working. Once the temperature of the system is high enough, steam will start getting produced. Boom. And we're getting pahoho lava at a very decent rate. An auto breaker, an auto placer, and a fluid placer. We'll put our auto breaker here, and our fluid placer here. Watch it go. Behold the basalt. Right now we have 16, but for my plants, we need 30. Good thing I have more lava. I need 5 inscribers, and atomic modules are pretty expensive, so it's a good thing I can make them with a fabrication chamber. 5 stabilized ender pearls, 5 thermal binders, 60 reinforced stone, 60 reinforced stone bricks, 30 stable stone, and 5 inscribers. Let's do something different than usual for our inscribers. This last inscriber will go down under this travel anchor, but that's for when I'm going to automate it. For ease of use, right now, I'm going to put it right here. And that's it for today's episode. Again, sorry it took a while, but the end of the year is always busy. Next episode, we'll do some actual Applied Energistics 2. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!